Did you know that Lithuanian summer camps are militarizing Ukrainian kids and that the United States apparently wanted to pound Ukraine into powder? Well, this is Stop Fake, the place where we break down fake news and Russian disinformation. So let's get to it. Russian media featured several stories last week about summer camps in Lithuania for children of Ukrainian servicemen deployed in the Donbas. The website Ruskaya Vesna wrote, quote, In the Baltics, children are being prepared for war. You cannot call this normal. While Tsargrad, the orthodox and monarchist website, claims that youth camps in Lithuania and Latvia are teaching Ukrainian children partisan warfare. Both publications emphasize that the camps are organized by the Lithuanian Riflemen's Union, a patriotic organization dedicated to military training, sports, and culture. Russian media have said, quote, This organization was banned in 1940 and its members were arrested, but now they are back and they're manipulating children suggesting that something bad has returned. Now, according to the Lithuanian Riflemen's Union official website, the organization traditionally coordinates summer camps for young people from Lithuania and other countries. On August the 5th through the 10th, the Ukrainian children participated in the camp, including children from Ukraine's Eastern Luhansk province and children of Ukraine's 30th Army Brigade. You should know that Ukraine's 30th Brigade has suffered some of the heaviest casualties in Russia's war against Ukraine, meaning that several hundred children were left without their fathers, and the Lithuanian summer camp invited orphan children whose fathers had served in that brigade. The deputy commander of the Lithuanian Riflemen's Union, Zdrunas Sadauskis, said, at Union camps, we aim to develop active, self-confident, and leadership-minded young people. We hope that the Ukrainians will learn something new in this environment, gain self-confidence, will be bolder in their future goals, rest, and return home with good impressions. The camps in question are the same kind of summer camps with patriotic programs for children held all over Europe and the United States. Russia also holds similar camps throughout the country, but these Russian camps are state-sponsored and organized, whereas the Lithuanian camp is organized by a private non-governmental organization. At the Russian Seliger Youth Camp, children were taught to impale opposition figures and listen to lectures on how to prevent revolutions in Russia. The intent of Russian disinformation in this case is to malign the Lithuanian Riflemen's Union, and they go out of their way to do so, pointing out that the organization was banned in 1940. But when you come across information about bans, especially from what you might read in Russian media, that's your red flag to ask the question, why was this organization banned? They don't answer that question because they deliberately ignore historical facts. And the fact is, the Soviet Union occupied Lithuania in 1940 and banned the Riflemen's Union arresting its members as enemies of the people and imprisoning them in Siberian gulags. The short answer to why this organization was banned is because it represented a serious threat to the Soviet occupation's consolidation of power over Lithuania. The Lithuanian Riflemen's Union was established in 1919 with the purpose of consolidating the country's independence and protecting Lithuania, holding annual summer youth camps where they aspire to instill a patriotic viewpoint while focusing on sports and culture. The organization was completely repressed and disbanded after the Soviet Union occupied Lithuania, but was restored in 1989. According to Leonid Kravchuk, the first president of Ukraine following the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, the United States threatened to pound Ukraine into powder if Kyiv did not give up its nuclear arsenal, and fearing the American threat, Ukraine's leadership surrendered its nuclear warheads. This is a classic Russian disinformation distortion of what was actually said. Russian media are claiming that Kravchuk was admitting that Ukraine could have accidentally launched a nuclear missile. Now remember that one of the favorite themes of Russian disinformation about Ukraine is nuclear catastrophe as a result of Ukrainian incompetence. RT wrote, quote, Post-Soviet Ukraine was in a fever. Anything could have happened with the nuclear weapons. That is why we, Russia, and the Americans posed this question to Kravchuk so categorically. The question that they're referencing had to do with Ukraine suddenly becoming independent of the Soviet Union and, as a result, the world's third largest nuclear power after Russia and the United States. But note the use of the word fever, connoting a sickness and the inability to act rationally. Russian media further claimed that after the annexation of Crimea and occupation of the eastern Donbass in 2014, Ukrainian authorities were regretting their decision on nuclear disarmament and started blaming Russia for the loss of nuclear status. And then Russian disinformation concludes that this statement is evidence showing the nationalist, russophobic ideology of modern Ukraine. 
now. As usual, the seeds for Russian disinformation are harvested from real interviews. That's the grain of truth that they try to use to make the manipulation believable. Ukrainian television channel 24 really did conduct a sweeping interview with Leonid Kravchuk during which he addressed the topic of Ukraine giving up its nuclear arsenal after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Kravchuk said that at that time, the United States warned Ukraine of possible economic restrictions being placed on Ukraine if it did not give up the nuclear weapons that were deployed on its territory. But the problem was not that Ukraine could accidentally launch a missile, Kravchuk pointed out, or that all the nuclear missiles on Ukraine's territory were aimed at the United States, but that all the codes for launching them were located in the Kremlin. Because all nuclear launchers were exclusively controlled by Moscow, Ukraine could not guarantee security to its Western partners. Kravchuk asked the question, who could guarantee that no one would press a button and launch a rocket? Not about Ukraine doing so, but that no one in Ukraine could guarantee that Russia would not launch a missile at the United States. A missile located in Ukraine. The missiles may have been located on the territory of Ukraine, but the triggers were in the Kremlin. There were also many questions pertaining to the technical state of these nuclear missiles, Kravchuk repeatedly explained. In 1997, the shelf life of the Ukrainian warheads was ending, and they needed to be replaced or risk a potential accident. In exchange for abandoning the Russian-controlled nuclear weapons on its territory, Ukraine received economic benefits and avoided international isolation. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, Ukraine found itself with the third largest nuclear arsenal in the world. On October the 24th, 1991, the Ukrainian parliament passed legislation declaring Ukraine a nuclear-free state. Three years later, Ukraine committed to non-proliferation treaties, and in exchange, the United States, Russia, and Great Britain signed the Budapest Memorandum, providing security guarantees for Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Annexing Crimea and invading eastern Ukraine in 2014, Russia violated the Budapest Memorandum and disregarded a long list of international obligations. That is the reason for whatever antipathy might exist towards Moscow, not some mythical Russophobia. That's it for this week. You can find much more dissected disinformation on our website, stopfake.org. Be vigilant, look out for fakes, and if you spot any disinformation about Ukraine, forward it to us for a truth autopsy. I'm Marco Supran, and this is Stop Fake. Thanks for watching.